The problem here, is that you do not realize that, because of the long time between present, and the, bomb detonation. It's shocking, it's hilarious, it's amazing, and it's real. It is possible to realize it when you are approaching the deadline, or when the clock suddenly changes its detonation time in a much shorter one. And, it's very probable that, if you realize what actually death means, to begin enjoying life even more. Mary Allen used to run the Royal Opera House. Now she spends most of her day gardening and trying to write a novel. Oh, no, I used to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, leave the house at 5.30, get, down, get to my desk at 6. Then I'd have three hours before anybody else turned up, when I could do my reading and my thinking and my writing. 9 o'clock through till 7, I had meetings. And then at 7 o'clock, I'd have to go out either to a performance or a dinner or some kind of function. Did you get a chance to look at the flowers? Occasionally. Fleetingly. Very, very fleetingly. But on the whole, what were you mostly taken up with? Um, just keeping the whole thing on the road. I remember in February 97 thinking, I can't carry on doing this much longer because I feel terribly empty. You know, what do I do with my life? I think about arts funding, arts politics, a bit of art if I'm lucky. I've got nothing else in my head. I've got nothing else I can talk about. In 1999, Mary was diagnosed with breast cancer. She quit the high-flying career that had meant so much to her. How did the thought of death change your values? I think it makes you reassess everything almost instantly and overnight. I think one of the most important things to me was realising that through all those years when I'd been at the Arts Council and the Royal Opera House, I'd hoped that my friends would wait and wouldn't mind the fact that I wasn't spending too much time with them, but I'd always assumed that time, if not infinite, there was a reasonable amount of it. And that one of the most important things for me then was to just, to just spend far more time and energy and make much more of a commitment to personal relationships. So that's my husband, my family, friendships. And what started to matter less? Oh, work. <laughs> work, work suddenly had the status of nothing but providing you with the money to live. Whereas before, what had it been for you? Oh, beforehand, I think it had been a means through which I could achieve all kinds of subsidiary objectives, like feeling good about myself, uh, intellectual stimulus, in fact, all kinds of things that I could have provided for myself through other ways. There is no purpose in life. That's a hard thing to accept. People, ego, think that Fresco is here to help make the world a better place. Well, that, that's a pleasing to me, but I don't buy that shit. I know that, that nature has no purpose. So they say we have eyes to see with. Now that makes sense to all normal people, which are completely fucked up. So whenever a scientist comes to my lab and says, the purpose of eyes are to see. And I say, do you really believe that? He says, yeah. So I take him in a closet and close the door and say, see. He says, I can't see anything. Put the light on. So you have eyes and you see if there's light. But you don't have eyes to see with. They think you have ears to hear with. No, you have ears and you hear. Some animals' ears turn in different directions toward the sound. 
two farmers walking down the road. One of them says to the other, you hear about them Wright brothers trying to build a flying machine? The guy laughs, he spits. He says, if the good Lord wanted a man to fly, he'd have been born with wings. Oh, if the good Lord wanted you to wear clothing, he'd have been born with a suit. If he wanted you to live in a house, he'd have been born in a house. It's all that stupid stuff. Because death is a result, the problem is actually the aging. Aging is a complex but natural process that affects every molecule, every cell, every organ, and ultimately your entire body functions. And although chronological aging is inevitable, unfortunately, unlocking the secrets to biological aging has perhaps been the ultimate scientific quest for many years. Most recently, scientific research is focused on the way our cells age and how aging impacts their function, reproduction, and ultimately the lifespan of our cells. This may help us to better understand the causes and ultimately the potential solutions for key age-related diseases such as heart disease and cancer. We've all known people who look old for their age. Clearly there are genetic factors involved there, lifestyle factors, nutritional factors that all affect how we age. But now much is known about these cellular processes that incorporate these various factors and lead to people aging slowly or more quickly. The first way we age is due to DNA damage. Our DNA is under continuous assault from ionizing radiation, from toxins in the environment, and even as a result of just the normal processes of metabolism. And up to a million DNA damaging assaults occur every single day and these can result in genetic typos or mistakes in the DNA replication. Now these mutations can accumulate over time, eventually causing cells to malfunction and even die prematurely. Our bodies, though, have repair mechanisms that take care of this DNA damage. However, defects in DNA repair seem to be directly related to the aging process. This critical balance between protecting the DNA from damage as well as repairing DNA is an ongoing area of active research. Another process that leads to aging, as well as disease, is the activation of genetic regulators, which are also known as transcription factors. These impact a multitude of metabolic processes in our body, including the dynamic balance between DNA damage and repair, also between energy production and decline, and control cell lifespan. Over time, the activity of these genetic regulators seems to decline and cumulative cell damage can occur. This cumulative damage contributes to age-related cellular deterioration and also contributes to many diseases of aging, including cancer, kidney failure, and even dementia. The third way that we age is related to cellular structures called mitochondria, which are the intracellular power plants that transform carbohydrates, fats, and proteins from the food that you eat into energy that your body can use but free radicals are also generated in this process, which can lead to serious damage to your mitochondrial membrane, as well as to DNA. This oxidative damage accumulates over time, leading to decreases in both the number of the mitochondria in our cells, as well as their function, and can contribute to the development of many age-related diseases, including heart disease, arthritis, and Alzheimer's disease. As we age, our proteins and other structural molecules develop damaging crosslinks to one another through a process called glycation. Glucose molecules attach to proteins, forming what are called advanced glycation end products, also known as age proteins. The accumulation of these crosslink damaged proteins are somewhat like plaque building up in your arteries, and they are tied to some of the most debilitating effects of aging. In fact, scientists are theorizing that these age proteins may play an important role in the development of atherosclerosis, as well as certain complications of diabetes and chronic kidney failure.